Welcome to the Badass Direct Sales Mastery Podcast with your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Badass Direct Sales Mastery is a podcast for rock star direct sales moms who are determined to make their business kick ass. Jenny will share her knowledge of effective sales and recruiting techniques, tips to get what you want from your business, and will interview direct sales professionals and leaders from various companies. The interviews will give insight to how these rock stars got to where they are and where they plan to grow in the future. And now, the direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Welcome back to another episode of Badass Direct Sales Mastery. I'm your host, your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger, helping you whip your business into shape. Today, I have my new favorite human being on the show with me. Um, I know I often say uh, that I'm excited to have someone on or happy to have someone on. Guys, I cannot even tell you, I'm ecstatic through the roof, excited to share my new friend Michael with you because Michael and I connected a few weeks ago and we have nonstop been messaging, TikToking, Facebooking, like emailing, introducing one another to people. It's been freaking brilliant. And the reason I wanna bring Michael to you is because you've been hearing this. If you've been listening to my show for any period of time, you've heard how important networking is. So let me tell you why Michael Whitehouse is the person you need to know, because he's the guy who knows a guy. So Michael Whitehouse is the guy who knows a guy. In 2014, he came to Groton, Connecticut, knowing no one at all. A year later, after diving into networking with both feet, he was a major connector in the local community. In 2020, he went global and began connecting entrepreneurs, investors, speakers, and others around the world to people they need to know. He offers his services as a networking concierge, making connections and building strategic alliances around the world. He is the host of the daily Morning Motivation Podcast and the new Neurodiversity Superpowers Podcast. So, Michael, welcome to the show. What, thank you for, for having me. I said welcome. Yeah, thank you for welcoming me. <laughs> and I was going to try to like, Neurodiversity Superpowers. Oh, right, you were on that. Yeah. I was on that show, right? Which makes perfect sense because my audience, again, if they've been listening for any amount of time, they know that I'm ADHD. And so I fall within that neurodiverse you know, category. And so when you and I met at the Get Connected, Stay Connected with Virginia Mooskies a few back in, I think it was August or late July or something like that. I was like, uh, yes, this is a no brainer. <laughs> I need to connect with this man. And through our multiple meetings, connections, conversations, we have so much in common. But what fascinates me about you is this networking piece and mm. how you got to become the guy who knows a guy like that's literally your 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 website name and and your handle on like all the platforms and so let's tell the story of how you got from not knowing anybody where you were to now literally being the guy who knows a guy for people around the world yeah yeah so there's a few parts so the first is as i when i moved to to groton in 2014 knowing absolutely nobody I had kind of a half-baked business idea and in retrospect, as I know more about business, I'm like, that wasn't even a half bed. That was like a cocktail napkin of a cocktail <laughs> napkin idea. But what I knew was I needed to have a network. Whatever I was going to do, I was going to need to build a network. And so I started going to network events because I knew where networking happened, if not how. And just ignorance on fire. So I started going to events and meeting people. And uh, the, the thing was, I had nothing to offer them. I didn't have a business. I didn't have any money. I didn't have uh, the only thing I had was the connections I was making in that networking. So it was almost from a, a position of blessed lack that the only thing I could do was make introductions. So I did that because I didn't want to, you know, I'm just this guy who wandered in off the street. So, but <laughs> I can connect you to that person over there. Mm -hmm. And people uh, don't network very well for the most part. So, by approaching every introduction or every conversation saying, who can I introduce you to? How can I help you out? I was one of the best networkers they met because who at a networking event is focused on how they can help you instead of what they can sell you. I didn't have anything to sell. My business was half-baked. So all I could do was make introductions. So within a few months, I was discovering I was connecting people who were very impressive to me to other people who were very impressive to me. And I always thought they were like super exclusive clubs where the impressive people hung out. Apparently there aren't because they don't know each other. <laughs> so I was making these connections. 
Uh, here in New England, New Englanders don't tend to travel any great distance, like more than a mile or two. So I could, if there was a river between the two people I was connecting them, they'd never heard of each other and an amazing connection got made. So that was great. And then come pandemic times, everything went online. And one of the first things I realized was, so if my BNI group just went on to Zoom, then everyone else's BNI group just went on to Zoom and I can Zoom anywhere in the world. So I visited groups in Australia, Malaysia, across the United States, England, all over the place. And, and uh, you know, it, so that was the beginning of it. And there, there was no business reason to do it. I was still publishing a local magazine at the time, but it, it got me clued into that concept. And from there, I just kept going, going, because here, here's Southeast Connecticut is, is not the commercial center of Southeast Connecticut, let alone its region. So <laughs> being the connector in an area where there's not a lot of big business happening, there's no money in that. There's there's no big introductions to make. But once I was once I could slip to the earthly bonds of geography and start connecting anywhere where Zoom reaches, which is a lot of places, mm-hmm. suddenly and by suddenly, I mean over 18 months later, suddenly I was able to start making connections where there was enough money in the system, there's enough opportunity in the system that people were willing to pay me to make introductions for them and were willing to, you know, that there was value, there was commissions, there was money in the system. And suddenly a business could exist. And and, and the whole being knows the guy who knows a guy, I wrote the book, The Guy Who Knows a Guy, because at the time I was a salesperson for a Minuteman Press franchise. Mm-hmm. And people just saw me as their business card sales guy, like, you know, sell me business cards and letterheads. And, and I've been in business 15 years. I'd worked at a lot of different businesses. I knew a bunch of stuff and nobody cared because they just saw me as a salesman. And I said, if I write a book, I'll be an author. And if I'm an author, they won't see me as business card salesman. They'll see me as someone who might know something and maybe like listen to me and take my advice. And just before I finished the book, I got hired as a marketing manager for a startup. And I never actually got to test if being an author would change how people saw me. But the book was called The Guy Who Knows a Guy. A friend of mine said, you need a website for this book. So I got guyonosaguy.com. I set up the website for the book and then everything else I did, I'm like, I don't want to set up a seller website. I've already got one. I'll just attach it to this one. And it became this just Christmas tree. Well, I've re- I looked recently, I have 67 pages on that site. <laughs> Never had a strategy in how I built it. It's just everything sort of there. That uh, sounds know, people... so neurodiverse right yeah. there. I mean, it, oh, it, yeah, yeah. it, it totally tracks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people totally introduced me on a podcast. I'm like, where did that intro come from? Guy who guy.com slash about. Oh, yeah, I should probably update that. That might be a place people go for intros. Mm. <laughs> but, but yeah, so yeah. so I just I had that the brand from the book and just ran with it. I love uh, and because it's it's a good name. I think my mother came up with it, but I can't remember exactly. But I well, credit hey, get, giving credit where credit's due close enough. So mm-hmm. it, what I love about this, well, first of all, I did not know you were a BNI member. Are you still in BNI? I am not. Not. Okay. But that's okay. At least you speak the verbiage and the language and and we can still have that kind of a conversation, right? Or at least in the general idea of the importance of networking groups, if you were Mm -hmm. trying to grow a network, right? Because freaking love it. So the people who are listening to this right now, the person who is listening to this right now is in direct sales or network marketing of Mm -hmm. some sort mlm one of those three categories and i I often make the joke that for those who are in network marketing they're dropping the ball on 50 percent of their job (laughs) which is networking it's literally in your freaking name people if you call yourself a network marketer and you're not networking every single week you're dropping the ball right yep Yep. so what are some of the you know because you you brought it up in in you talking about the networking piece that you know Mm -hmm. there are lots of people who show up at networking events who don't know how to network what are some of the biggest no-nos you see (laughs) happening in networking events both let's start with the ones in person and then we'll jump to the online versions okay i'm sure some of them probably translate but what are some of the biggest no-nos you see happening in networking from individuals yep well i'm gonna start with a no-no of not networking uh (laughs) which yeah i i I prepared well for this interview by getting awkwardly cold pitched yesterday (laughs) 
<laughs> it, it couldn't yes. be better. It was a, a new Primerica rep. And she sent me what I am pretty sure is the text she was given by her trainer or recruiter or whatever. Uh, and and it was it was awful. And it made her sound like a newbie who didn't know anything. And mm -hmm. Primerica sells life insurance and financial products. So it's not like we're talking about isogenics where you're selling me you yeah. know, nutritional powders where you can literally have just fallen off the turnip truck and sell me a perfectly good product. If you sell me the wrong, you know, morning shake, well, oops, I don't like strawberry. If you sell me the wrong mutual fund, we've got a somewhat <laughs> bigger problem. Yes. And it turned out this person, she's got background in banking. She has a specialization in services for parents of disabled kids. She actually knows a bit about investments. She doesn't know how to sell because she has a background in banking or right. bankers don't know how to sell. But that was the thing was she approached me, the guy who knows a guy cold approach. I guess we had friends in common and something made her think I'd be interested in knowing about this with with the the pitch of I've I've started this new thing and I like to, you know, meet with you with my trainer to basically let me pitch you as part of my training, which only works for people who actually like you and know you. Right. And are like, <laughs> okay, sure, I will waste 30 minutes of my time to be your training dummy. I don't know this person. Yeah. But she was already talking to me and someone reached out to me. I'm willing to have a conversation with them, but she didn't do any of the things that would take advantage of what I could do. Like, do you know anyone who might be interested in this? Or could we talk and could I get your advice? Or do you know any place where people would be interested in learning about this? Or, you know, all those things she could have asked. She didn't. Yeah. And instead went straight for the pitch. And yeah. And I pointed out that it was it was pitchy and made her sound like a newbie. She's like, what do you mean? I'm like, oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah. Like you you asked to. To because I think that maybe she she honestly thought that by saying I want to share with you what I'm doing, it didn't come across as pitching. Yeah. And if you're selling something and you're sharing with me what you're doing, you're pitching it like that's what share with you what I'm doing when you're selling something means. We all so, know better. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the first thing is uh, the first step to networking is do it. So yeah. go to the networking events, ask people. And so along those lines, I always say eliminate the you, the second person from how you talk about what you do. Yes. So don't say, so if you need a, eh, nope, don't say that. If now you can say, if you know someone or for anyone, you know, who does need that people will opt in if it's them. Right. They, they they can their brains can convert from they to you. They'll figure that out. Yes. You know, the, the old the, the meme with with Obi-Wan Kenobi. Of course, I know him. He is me. <laughs> They'll self-identify if they need to. But yes. if you come at me and you're saying and, and that's one of my one of my pet peeves in an event is that someone saying so if you need I'm like, well, I don't. But thanks for playing. Mm hmm. And then, so I actually have a, a ninja rubric, because if you can make an acronym, the word ninja, you should. You should. And so the, the first level of networking is network prospecting. That is, do you want to buy my stuff? As I've heard someone say, are you my mommy networking? Yes. <laughs> you my customer? Are you my customer? Are you my customer? The second level is introductions. So I'm looking for my customer three. Do you know my customer? If mm -hmm. you know anyone looking for insurance, I want to talk to them. The third level is non-competitive partners. That's where the magic happens. That's where you figure out who your referral partners are and you're asking for introductions to them. And this is really important because I, as a networker, very small chance that I'm your level one match, mm -hmm. very small chance I'm your level two match. Because if I just met you and you sell insurance, real estate, mortgages, graphic design, marketing, I almost guaranteed know 20 people better than you now, I may know them better than you, or they may be better than you at your job. Either way, I know 20 other people and I'm going to refer before you because yep. I don't know you. We are at the bottom of the referral confidence curve. See, I still remember my BNI words. Yes. Yeah, we're, we're at the bottom of that. And BNI is generally what I call a level two networking group. It's mm -hmm. focused on my ideal customer is, so if you know my ideal customer, which is why when someone joins a BNI group, they're told it can take six to 12 months to start getting results because you need to get to know people so they trust you. So they're willing to trust you to pitch somebody they know. Right. Because uh, that, that's a that's a risky introduction. Yeah. And without a strong countervailing incentive, you know, now if I'm going to get a $10,000 commission, if you sell them, I'm willing to take a bit more of a chance. Yeah. If I'm going to get, 
one more number in a column in a report that nobody actually sees, a better that's still better know you, but that's that's, that's not gonna that's not gonna make the risk. Right. That's risk my reputation that I'm putting yeah. out there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and besides reputation, it's a headache. I don't the 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 energy that I will lose by someone coming back to me and being like, oh man, I talked to that woman and you sent me why did you do that to me? Right. Yeah. You know, I, I don't want someone mm-hmm. coming back for an introduction and saying, why do you do that to me? Since November, because I finally started tracking this with a spreadsheet, I've made uh, approximately 1,065 introductions since November of 2021, which would be, what's that, 10 months Okay. since I started tracking. And I have not had one of those 1,060-something introductions come back and say, why'd you do that to me? <laughs> now, plenty of them. plenty of them never actually connect. Plenty of them, yeah, I met, they were cool, but nothing happened. And then a whole bunch of them came back as like, that was amazing. But none of them so far, knock on wood, have come back with, ugh. 30 minutes of my life, I'm never getting back. Right. So and it's partly because I don't make a lot of those level two introductions. Right. That's also why I'm not in BNI anymore. Because I found at BNI, everyone was all about, you know, so if you know anyone, like, people don't talk to me about buying a house. People don't talk to me about those things. People talk to me about higher level connections now. Yeah. So I'm not having those conversations that result in me referring a painter on a regular basis. Right. And so I, I'm now in groups where people talk about, you know, groups of networkers and, you know, who do you know, who knows, who knows. I actually have, I'm starting to find more and more partners who have, I mean, I'm not sure what the terminology for this would be, but I call it chain commissions. So someone's, for example, I was actually just on an info session about a really interesting investment opportunity. And so the the owner, the founder of the company found someone who found the guy who found me, and then I'm going to find people who know people who might be investors. And everyone in that chain gets an incentive for bringing that person in. Because from the beginning, they're thinking at that level of who do you know, who knows, who knows, who knows, who knows, who has the money, as opposed to that, like, do you have the money? Do you want to invest? Do you want to invest? Do you want to invest? Instead, it's who do you know who will invest? Or better yet, who do you know who has a community of people? Who might invest and oh. same thing with selling that's you know that that's how you get rich is by leveraging those connects and building those larger communities so if you're doing network marketing what everyone's going to expect you to do is start pitching their stuff yep. because that's what the companies teach you unfortunately which is weird because it doesn't work but if instead you go into conversations and you're all about connect actually one of the best networkers i knew locally was an isogenics rep mm. and she wouldn't talk to you about isogenics unless you asked her. Yep. She would ask you, who do you need to know? And she was also a bartender. So she knew everybody in town. So she, she was a great BNI member because she, she would overhear the conversations about, oh, I couldn't help you notice. You mentioned you see a new roof and you need someone. Do you know, do you need someone? I got, I got a guy here. So she would, she would be in those places to be in those conversations to make the connections. Uh, and of course, at BNI, she'd talk about isogenics and, right. and what it could do. But Unless you asked her what she did, she wouldn't talk about isogenics. She wouldn't try to get you into a conversation. She wouldn't try to do, you know, nope. you had to ask her yes. to pitch you and then she'd happily do it. So by the time you did that, she's already found you, you know, your insurance guy, your roofer and someone to adopt a cat from. And then you're <laughs> finally like, so Lori, what do you do? Oh, I, I do isogenics. It's pretty cool. It keeps me healthy. Oh, can you tell me more about that? Sure. Yeah. If you want, yeah, I'm open to that. But yeah. that's what she led with service yes. instead of leading with sales. You I need would have to, to serve first. Yeah, no, I would agree with that because that was how I utilized BNI once I figured out the system, right? Mm-hmm. It When I showed up, I, of course, was trying to get those initial purchases for the company that I was with at the time. But then when I figured out, oh, this isn't working, what can I do instead? I started providing those connections, referrals, you know, all of that. Mm -hmm. And that started bringing me a lot more and very much the same. I didn't talk about what I did, you know, unless somebody asked. I did not go verbally vomit all over people. I wanted them to reciprocate and and ask me after I've I've already done these. So tell me about you. Tell me about what you do. Tell me about who you're looking for. How can I connect you? What should I be listening for? What should I what should I be asking them? What do you want me to say? What do you want me to absolutely not say? What's a Mm -hmm. no no? Like, yeah, 
all and of I'm, those questions. I'm, I'm just laughing because because if they were one of the common things that so many there, there's just flags that that let me know someone is with an MLM company. Yeah. And one of them is we have a multi-billion dollar company. Yeah. As if that's impressive. Let's see. Multi-billion dollar companies. McDonald's, Walmart, <laughs> Home Depot. Yeah. Uh, Home Depot's okay. Verizon, Comcast. None of them do I want to would I want to try to associate myself with be like I'm like Walmart. Oh, really? That's awesome. I need to be somewhere else now. Yeah. So and, and then it's a huge opportunity because it's a multi-billion dollar company. Huh. Because I know a lot of people work for Walmart or on food stamps, but they're associated with a multi-billion dollar company. Yeah. So for anyone listening, stop saying that. Mm -hmm. Stop. I don't care. I don't yeah. <laughs> nobody it does. Is, it. it is an anti-selling point. Yes. No, and I, I definitely agree. It's those are vanity metrics, mm -hmm. you know, that very, very few people actually care about in the networking process. You know, what's what I found was really effective for me when I was networking and people would say, what do you do? I did not jump into the sales pitch or anything like that for mm -hmm. me. Now, you don't know this, but my audience who've, who's been listening for a while, my badass crew, they know that I was in the world of jewelry. And mm -hmm. so when somebody would say I'd be out networking, it didn't matter if I was at BNI or at a chamber or random networking uh, here in the St. Louis area pre-COVID, we had a thing called business and beer, you know, all kinds of different networking events, right? And somebody would say, you know, hey, what do you do? My response was, I help busy professional women get ready faster in the morning and feel more confident so they could go out and kick ass in their day. Hmm. That would at least make me ask, but what do you do? Right. Which like, now I've now asked you, like, yeah. which I, I've now said, please tell me your actual business. Yeah, exactly. Because what do you do does not, I do not want to know your life story. I just want to know enough to figure out which direction the conversation is going. Exactly. And it, it was enough to pique people's interest, you know, because mm -hmm. I learned very quickly. I sell jewelry. I could literally watch people's eyes cloud over like yep. they, they, their brain would just go into shut off. Oh, here comes the pitch. Right. Like, mm -hmm. nope. And, and I don't care if you're in network marketing or not. When I have somebody come to me and say, I sell paint, I sell anything like MLM or not. Mm -hmm. The word sell is an automatic trigger yep. for most people that their brain goes, whoop, put up that wall, bam. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I'm, I'm thinking of the last, last time I bought something from a network marketing company, and I'm blank, you probably know which company it is. It's the uh, stick on vitamin patches. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the woman I was talking to, she had no point attempted to pitch or present or sell or close. She shared what she did and mm -hmm. she explained it. And so I got curious, kept asking questions and eventually was like, put your linky in the chat so I can buy a thing because, yeah, cause, yeah, it's like $55 to get a thing. And I'm like, I'll try it out. So I ordered one. I didn't end up becoming a long-term customer, but I jumped in the boat. I said, I want to buy this because she didn't try. If she tried to sell it, it would have been a real short conversation. Yep. But she simply informed. And that's how I, I do my business. My network and concierge service. Uh, partly because it is a service where I make introductions. So I don't want any client who is not 107% sure they want to work with me. Yeah. If I need to overcome objections, negotiate, present, convince, worse thing, I don't want to introduce someone to a, a client to one, to someone I meet and then to be like, Oh yeah, Michael sent you. Yeah. He's okay. I, I might <sighs> stick with him. I don't know. Yeah. You know, my clients, when I introduce to them, introduce mm -hmm. people, I meet to them. That conversation like, oh, Michael sent you. Oh, great. Yeah. No, he sends me good people. So you're probably you're, you're good. So I'm excited to meet you. Like that's yes. the kind of person I'm working with, which means I sell that same way, which is I explain to people what I do. And then they say, oh, how does that work? And I explain how it works. Oh, what's the cost? And I tell them what it costs. How do I sign up? And I tell them how to sign up. And yeah. that's if it doesn't go that way, I they can't hire me. I don't sell them. And it is amazing how effective that can be if you do something somewhat unique. The challenge is like here in Southeast Connecticut, especially in the, the BNI world, there's, I think there might be an isogenics rep in every BNI group. So yeah. if you're at all networked, then you run into someone who does it. And then it's a question of like, well, who should I work with? You know, the product sounds interesting, but I know five of you and I know I can only be with one. So I don't know. But when I met someone who is something actually unique, 
uh, because I'd never run into it before. I was like, okay, yeah, oh, I'm interested in this. Tell me more. This is, yeah, yeah, this is interesting. No, I I definitely agree with that. And and one of the ways that I've personally handled that situation is I just make sure I know. So here here in the St. Louis area, there is not a chapter without a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. Like so in BNI. Every chapter has what's called the firm, financial in insurance, realtor, and mortgage, right? And then I say, and then there's a silent C at the end of firm, and it's chiropractor. <laughs> because ev- because we have Logan College here, Logan Chiropractic College. So you uh, okay. you you can't you can't spit without in any direction without hitting a chiropractic office. You know, I mean, seriously, I, I once upon a time passed six chiropractors offices to get to my chiropractors office. They are they are a dime a dozen in the St. Louis area. So they have to join BNI if they want to build and grow. And they mm-hmm. all it's a very coveted seat. And so I know a chiropractor literally I know 60 chiropractors in the St. Louis area fairly well. <laughs> and when people say, well, well, why do you care? Well, first of all, I'm a big believer in that particular brand of healthcare and wellness because mm-hmm. of what it's done for me. But then I want to be able to send somebody the perfect chiropractor for them. The one that's in within five mile radius of their house or work or specializes in the area in which that person needs help. Mm-hmm. And so If a chiropractor says, oh, you can just send me anybody with a spine. I'm like, oh, honey, you're going to get nobody. Mm -hmm. And that is my response. You tell me anybody with a spine. eh, Anybody equals nobody. Amen. Amen. So Mm -hmm. anybody who um, is an absolute no, no. I want specifics because I, I need my brain, especially as a neurodiverse person. I love that little, that little hit of dopamine, serotonin. I don't know which one it is. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I want that little positive, like, <gasps> I know somebody like I want that, you know, thing. So one of the mm-hmm. chiropractors I know specializes in student athletes. They want high school or college student athletes. Perfect. Well, extra bonus, the football coach for the local university lives across the street from me and our kids play together. Would you like to meet him? Oh my yeah. God, that'd be so amazing. Like that's the golden goose, right? That's that level, yeah. what, probably level three introduction you're talking about, mm-hmm. right? The golden goose is, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, and that's, well, and and that's important to know like how to, how to do a good ask. And before your asks right. is the gives. Yeah, actually, I I run a, a private exclusive networking group, and at the first level, there's, there's multiple levels because I'm a geek in addition to being a networker. So when you join <laughs> the group, you get you have to work your way through the levels. And at the first level, you can't make an ask in the room; you can only make a give. So when you come in, mm-hmm. you have to start until you have gotten endorsed by five other members who say this person's pretty cool. Uh, you as you start by saying, you know, I'm well connected in the financial community, or I can. Uh, you know, I can do whatever. I can uh, review your your LinkedIn profile and give you some feedback, or yeah, you know, whatever it is. It, it can't be like a discovery call kind of thing. That's not right. a give. That's a take. But yeah, you, know, you have to come in with here's what I have to share, and it creates a giving first mentality in the mm. group, which works really well. Actually, a, it's a group of mostly you know high six seven figure business owners, and probably half the people in the room on any given meeting don't have an ask, and is. It's not because they're they're not prepared. It's just because they're saying, "Hey, you know, my my things are pretty good, but what I can offer this week is, I can connect you to whatever you need." Because their 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 mindset is to give first, and they're abundant and well networked and well connected, and they don't have that you know immediate need all the time. But if you go in always looking to give, then people will get to know you that way and be like, "Oh, yeah, I love Jenny. She's always you know always happy to connect, always happy to share." And then if you ever do have an ask, you be like, oh, my God, I've been waiting for a chance to reciprocate because you've done all this for me. What can I do for you? But you, you need to put that deposit in the bank first before you can try to take it out. Yes. Yeah. And that's that swings back to that networking no-nos. Too many people are trying to make, you know, withdrawals mm-hmm. without ever having put anything in the freaking re- referral bank. I mean, yep. there's there's nothing there to there's literally nothing there to give there's no yep. there's no relationship there's no confidence there's no trust there's 
there's no referrals there's no support there oh, all the, all all the things. Things made me think so one of my other big pet peeves that I run into at networking events especially live events mm-hmm. um, as i say no one goes to a virtual networking event for the food but they certainly <laughs> go to live events for the food or yes. the drink or the music or the you know mm-hmm. the, the the attractions and whatnot but so i'll run into people who say you know i'll, I'll say who are you looking to meet and they're like, oh, I don't know. I'm just looking to get out in the community and meet whoever I can, which is, <sighs> which tells me that you're an amateur and you're not running a real business and you're not trying to grow your business. Yeah, but yeah. the way you could say almost the same thing with an equal level of laziness, but to sound like a networker would instead to say, well, I'm really, I'm mostly here to see how I can help other people and what connections I can make for them. Mm-hmm. Same amount of preparation. You still don't know what your ask is. But instead of sounding like someone who wandered in by accident, you sound like someone who's like, oh, I'm not really not really feeling like taking today. I don't know. I don't know what I want to ask for. So I'm really just here to give. And so for those of you out there, if you're at a networking event, you're not sure what to say and you don't know how to just say, oh, I'm just looking to, to figure out how I can help other people. I'm looking to make some introductions while I'm here, help some people out. And then people mm-hmm. say, oh, my goodness, you're an amazing networker. You haven't even introduced them to anyone yet. Yeah. But you've said the magic words that make you sound like the amazing networker without even having to remember. It took me the longest time to remember to ask, you know, who is your ideal introduction or who's your ideal referral, which is mm-hmm. what I was taught by, by my BNI mentor. And I kept forgetting to do that. But even if you don't do that, but you just say, like, I'm looking, I'm, I'm just here to make connections for other people. And, you know, right. or, or the other way to sound, you know, really successful is uh, things are actually going really well for me. I don't really have an ask right now. But yeah, I just want to help some other people with some of the connections I know. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's huge. Because you, know, you could be brand new in the business, have zero customers and be wondering how you're going to pay your rent. But if you if you still say, I, you know, I, I haven't really thought a lot about who, you know, what I'm looking for, but I'm mostly focused on how I can help other people and make introductions for them. People are going to assume you're successful because mm-hmm. you're not desperately being like, give me the money, give me the money, give me the money, give me the money. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. And and here's the here's the hidden element of that kind of thing too. When you become the go-to person for everything, mm-hmm. because as you mentioned before, Michael, you help them find the right insurance person. You got them connected to a great mortgage person to help them refinance their house. You help them uh, connect them to a painter who helped them paint their old house or blah, blah, whatever it is, right? Mm-hmm. When you've become that go-to person for all the other things, when they finally go, oh, so wait, you do what now? Oh, like, it, all of a sudden you they now figure out you're the go-to person for this so you know mm-hmm. here in the st louis area because my podcast has become so popular nationwide and and globally i'm now known as like one of three people in the st louis area who is the person to know when it comes to podcasting <laughs> so if anybody meets a podcaster they introduce them to me which is great because then i get to meet all kinds of people who are meeting other authors and whatever I'm still cool with that because they're thinking of me. Mm-hmm. Do you know Jenny Bellinger? Do you know Je- you're a po- you have a podcast? Do you know Jenny Bellinger? Because shh, don't tell anybody, but I am an affiliate with a with a podcast company, and I make money when I send them clients. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's it's another stream of income for my business that has yeah. nothing to do with who I coach, who I train, who I none of well, it. And- and that's that's one of the, the secrets of being a a super connector mm-hmm. is I'll meet with somebody and, you know, I usually 30 minute calls and they'll tell me what they're looking for. Uh, and I now do what I call a connection bonanza because my calendar filled up. Yeah. And I was booking out six, eight, nine weeks for one to ones, which also meant like someone wanted to hire me was also having to book nine weeks out, which is yeah. not a good business model. Nope. And Agreed. so I create a connection bonanza because people will be like, oh, you're the guy who's a guy. I want to talk to you because I want to tap into your network which I'm cool with for a reason I'm about to explain, but I don't necessarily need to give them a full 30 minute slot. So the connection bonanza is up to nine people who sign up for it. Right. And so they come in, they got a couple minutes to explain, here's what I do. Here's what I'm looking to meet. Here's good introductions. And then I make up to, th- I make zero to three introductions for them. And then from there, I decide like, do we need to have a one-to-one and talk more or I made some introductions. Cool. But either way, I will have conversations where I make a bunch of introductions for somebody. And 
and and there's and they're like, oh my god, this is amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, what can I do for you? Now, what they don't realize is two of the connections I made are to networking concierge clients who hired me to curate everyone I meet and make the right introductions. Mm-hmm. Two others are to affiliate partners where if they become a client or buy their program, whatever, I'm going to get a percentage. And one other is to a networking partner who I don't have a formal arrangement with, but it's good for me to build that relationship by sending those. So every one of those connections I'm making for them, that seems so generous. Yes. And they are. You know, I'm, <laughs> right. I'm not making, I don't make a single introduction that doesn't benefit the person I'm introducing. Right. But it seems altruistic, but it's not. That's it's the a win-win. business model. Uh, <laughs> so even if nobody, if they don't reciprocate, and frankly, I don't push for people to reciprocate introductions because quite frankly, I'm a professional connector and they're not. So yeah. the person they're going to connect me to might or might not be someone I need to meet. You know, if they yeah. know the person I need to meet, great. If not, that's okay. I don't need the reciprocated introductions unless they happen to know someone who is a really good fit because I have made it self-reciprocating. As many people in the network marketing world, yeah, you already have one affiliate relationship. You should perhaps consider having additional affiliate relationships. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it, to hit that point of the introductions, like my, the the referrals that come my way, and this is inside BNI, outside BNI, it doesn't really matter. Almost always fall to one end of the extreme. They're either absolutely amazing introductions, mm-hmm. which are fewer and farther between than I wish, or they tend to fall more on the, I put something in the system because I thought you two should meet, but then they never actually made the introduction or they made a very, an introduction that says, Jenny, this is Michael. Michael, this is Jenny. Bye. Yep. That's useless. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, so I, I've, I, because my, my fear, I, I've, two competing fears one is my calendar getting too full right. which is not a fear it's a it's a occupational hazard <laughs> uh and True. and you know and that's missing out on the people i really need to meet with and the mm-hmm. other one is filtering the wrong way and missing out on the people i really need to meet with i guess it's the same fear either way but yeah. one is more stressful because it affects my calendar mm-hmm. so and a lot of people don't know how to make introductions so they send that introduction of you know michael you should meet jenny she's really cool and i'm like does really cool mean she's fun? Does really cool mean there's a business opportunity? Does really cool mean you're trying to get her as a client? Like, right. what does really cool mean? And yeah. does that mean I should meet with her right away one-on-one or at some point in the future somehow? So I have I don't have the time or energy to go back and forth like, oh, tell me more about that person. Yeah. So that's why I have that there's a link off my website, guy knows a guy.com slash meet. And I and at that are all my, what I call connection stacking resources. So I have an open virtual coffee, one hour a week, anyone can drop in. And actually I was just on uh, Virginia Liz Quiz's podcast that dropped yesterday or today. And somebody signed up for my open virtual coffee off that. And I was like, ooh, neat. Nice. People listen to the very podcast good. and do the thing. Cause it's, it's very accessible. So you can hear me on a podcast, go there, drop in the open virtual coffee and we can connect without me having to set up one-to-one calls with strangers who hear me on a podcast. Right. Um, Because it's a group call. We still get to talk. It's just there might be five or 10 people in the room. And there's Connection Bonanza that I mentioned. Also, I do a a monthly networking, what do I call it? A networking gathering. It's just a monthly one-hour networking group. And if we have enough people, we go into breakout rooms. It's basically a place for people who I want to keep in my network, but I don't have anything to do with them directly. I can say, oh, come to the networking gathering. Now we can meet some people. You You can basically introduce yourself to people I know. Instead nice. of me having to send the emails out. But so so when I get those introductions that are like, hey, you should meet Jenny. She's cool. I'll be like, great, Jenny, here's some great ways to connect. Guy knows guy.com slash meet. And you go there and you pick the one that fits. And I have now invested all of a minute and a half mm-hmm. into that relationship because I don't know who the person is. They may be someone who will be a life-changing connection. They may be someone who will take up time and because I've yeah. definitely been on plenty of calls where I'm like, I know I booked 30 minutes, but I think I can beg out of this in 12. Yeah. <laughs> Why am I here? Oh, no, exactly. Uh, but to to swing back before we wrap this puppy up, this one 
this is one point that came up for me in talking about the quality of referral introductions, right? Mm -hmm. One of the most important things I learned, and I wish I could remember who taught it to me. So I'm giving credit to the person. I just don't remember who, because I learned it so long ago. Um, when making an introduction, the most important part of the entire introduction is the word because mm. and that which follows it. Jenny, I want to introduce you to Michael because mm -hmm. here's why. Here's why I think you want to know Michael. And then the next sentence is, Michael, I want to introduce you to Jenny because and then what's in it for them, yeah. right? What's in it for each person? explain it right there in front of each other and so i've been fully transparent in many of my introductions when i do that when i say hey look i really think there's a connection here because you you know during our conversation you said you needed this service and this person provides said service mm -hmm. and i trust them so you know it, like i've literally said i think you i think one of you is the client for the other yeah i, I don't try and hide that stuff i'm very open and transparent with it because they've already given me permission because I don't just helter skelter make introductions. It's, Hey, you said you need this service. I know yep. someone, would you like to meet them? Would you like me to introduce it? This doesn't mean you have to buy from them. This, this doesn't mean, mm -hmm. would you like to get an estimate from this person to fix that problem for you? Yeah. And, well, and, all and sometimes based on because. Yeah, every sometimes a because I, I do always try to put a because in there because I've gotten those where I'm like, why? And I'm going to LinkedIn <laughs> trying to figure it out and you know wasting much time. Right. But but you know, I, and sometimes the because is something somewhat right. I, I think actually the last introduction I made to you was you should meet this person because she has blue hair and you have purple hair and you both do something around sales and networking, so you should talk. Yeah. And like, where will that go? I don't know, but I I'll definitely I've made connections of like. I met you guys in back-to-back -back meetings. Um, you both have the same first name. You both live on the same island. I introduced two people in Malta. Oh, nice. On, you live in Malta. You live in Malta. You should meet each other. I don't know what you have in common, except you live on the same island, but you should oh, meet. Now I want to know, because I only know one person in Malta, but he's in B&I, so I'm curious if it's the same person that you met. <laughs> Is it Tommy? No, it's Carl. Okay. I can't remember if Carl was the second one. Carl Gresh? Uh, may have been. Was that him? He's a coach. Uh, I'll look it up. I don't what know. I but I, I, that's what's so fascinating because because of everything going online, like you mentioned at the beginning, so this is circling right back to the beginning. With everything <laughs> going online, I also started networking internationally. So I've had people on my podcast from Canada, from the UK, from um, Portugal, <laughs> from Mexico, from mm -hmm. all over the place because of my connections in BNI that I use to expand globally for the podcast. And just so I have a network all over the place, Oh yeah, um, which has yeah. been super beneficial. I've never um, met any of my clients in person. I, I have, but some of them, yes, some of them, some of them I knew before and some of them I met after yeah. became clients and I happened to travel to the city where they were and then we got to meet. So it was fantabulous. Or they've come to St. Louis for business or whatever. And I yeah. make a point I, to meet them. I look forward to meeting my clients, but everything I've been doing started with the pandemic. So right. I've, been, I've been in this box for, <laughs> for, so I, I do have one client. I have a coaching client who is local oh. that a, a local, local bank hired me. To, nice. to coach one of their people. But right. other than that, like all my networking concierge clients, they are in four different countries and nice. none of them are in my time zone. Wow. I, I, I for a while, was like, it's like do, do I smell that nobody wants to be within a thousand miles of me? <laughs> <laughs> no, it no, just, here's the, here's what I've learned. And you, I, it's very difficult to be a prophet in your own land because mm -hmm. they're like, because if you ask anybody here in St. Louis, you know, who's somewhat familiar with me, they're like, yeah, Jenny Ballinger, chick with purple hair, whatever. But then you go meet people at, at networking events, especially BNI events. There's some, there's some people up in Canada who think I am like you. <laughs> I'm the girl who knows a girl and she's the greatest BNI blah, blah, blah ever and blah. Like they say amazing things about me. And my chapter members are like, yeah, it's Jenny, whatever. 
Okay, yeah. sure. You know, but all the, you know, it's so interesting to me to, to watch that. Do you even know, like when I had Mark Victor Hansen on my podcast, Jack Canfield on my podcast, now I've had you and, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but people are just like, I, I'm honored to be in that list, by the way. Yeah. Hey, Cause you're amazing. You're awesome. Oh my Bye. gosh. I get I'm so excited. And, and I'm going to use this opportunity because I think what I'm going to do, I just realized this. I'm not going to wait until next week to put your podcast out. I'm putting oh. your po I'm putting this episode out as soon as I can this week cuz we're going to talk about two things for you guys. We have two freebies for you, all right? One of them, not freebies, gifts, giveaways, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it. I am a speaker on Michael's Summit. That's and true. anybody who's listening to this is going to be so excited because if you're listening to me, you are in my tribe and this is going to be very exciting for you. The name of the summit is Entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's not the whole thing. Give us the whole thing, Michael. Entrepreneur episode five, the summit strikes back. And it's his second summit. <laughs> uh -huh. The first one was Entrepreneur episode four, a new summit. <laughs> oh my God. So if you are geeking out as hard as I am about that, I'm putting the link for my link because we're going to know that that people came to this. Mm -hmm. Come check it out because we have a bunch of speakers and I just happen to be one of them. Nerdy, nerdy, nerdy speakers who are talking business, talking nerd stuff with Michael on the Entrepreneur Summit. So I'm going to be putting my link in the show notes go click on it. It's happening September 19th, 2022. If you're listening to this afterwards, check with Michael and see if you can get the recordings. We'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. So that's that. And, you, and then the big question is, are you going to use the correctly spelled version of your link or the incorrectly spelled version of your link? I know, right? Because because I, I, I don't know, your incorrectly spelled one is um, that one by itself is has brought in more people than any other speaker. Oh, so go Jenny Blinger. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can spell it however you want if it keeps bringing people in. Yeah, exactly. I will do the right one. And that's what's <laughs> funny. I, I caught the mistake 20 minutes after I posted that. And fixed as long it. As, as long so as there's a big number next to it and I can tell who it is. That's all that matters. Well, you know, who, exactly. Now, you know, they came through me. So mm -hmm. yippee yay, yay. I was like, I can get five people. Hell, I can get, I can do more than that. So mm -hmm. guys, I'm, I'm not even kidding you. I'm so excited about this because this brings together all of my worlds. It brings together my nerdy side. It brings together my business side, which are like, like, that's like life for me. So I am so excited for this summit. So Entrepreneur Summit, Episode 5, The the Summit Strikes Back. Mm -hmm. Be there or be square. I, you know, this is the way, all that good stuff. <laughs> so, uh, and then you also are sharing with the listeners. So if you're not a nerd, this gift, this next gift is for you. If networking is something that you struggle with and you would like some additional help. So tell us about your second gift. Yes. So my second gift is the new The Guy Who Knows a Guy app. <gasps> I've had an app built, and it's basically a repository of my content all into one place right on your phone. Uh, so it's, it's basically a library of content. I'm going to be – I've got plans in the future for having uh, something to think of calling the Infinite Summit on there. Basically, different people I know will put content kind of like a recorded summit. So that'll be there, but I I just uploaded a – practice version of my neurodiversity superpowers keynote speech is there i'm going to be putting up a, a mini course on how to network and and just you know it's, it's the place i'm dumping all of my content into one place videos and articles and recordings and podcasts and everything and you can find it on the android or itunes stores just search for the guy who knows a guy and you'll see my logo which i actually had to make a logo just for the app because i needed an icon <laughs> so like the, you'll see the Shaking Hands logo, which was created just for the app as I became an app owner. You know, I'm a I'm I'm a business owner who has an app, you know, just go get my app. Nice. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's going to be more and more stuff. And, you know, you put it on your phone and if you're like, oh, I want to know some networking stuff, just click on it and there you'll find some content. 
I am so excited. I'm I, I will be downloading that and checking it out myself. Just just so you all know. Yes, it's that it's that kind of thing that yes, I will 100% jump in on because the the conversations that I've had with Michael since I met you what 6 weeks ago mm-hmm. have been phenomenal. Oh, it's because TikTok shows me every every other video I see now is one of yours. So I feel like I talk to you all the time. <laughs> and what's funny is about half of my TikToks aren't even my voice, probably more <laughs> more than that. I, I do a lot of lip sync on my personal TikTok. But yeah, absolutely. I uh, it, Anyway, I have fun on the Tiki Talkies. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, we've gone a little long and I, I want to make sure that everybody knows that they can go grab the the guy who knows a guy app uh, at either the App Store or the Google Play Store. Make sure you go check those out. If you are interested in getting better at networking, go to the guy who knows a guy dot com forward slash meet. If you would like to check in with Michael on one of his wonderful open virtual coffee houses, coffee situations, whatever it's called. <laughs> Open virtual coffee, yeah. Open virtual coffee. There we go. You know, that's a great way to begin that process. So guy who knows a guy dot com forward slash meet if you want to check that kind of stuff out and get better at networking. And hey, depending on where you are in your network marketing business, if you've hit a level that you're like, you know what? I would love it if somebody was my networking concierge and going and finding me clients and team members and all that fun stuff. Hell, hire him. I'm I'm seriously thinking about it myself because, damn, girls only got so much time. Single mom, running a business, running a podcast. <sighs> you know how it goes. We all have we all have the same twenty four hours. So hire that which you can't do yourself. So yep. <laughs> awesome. Well, Michael, thank you so much. I absolutely would love to have you back to share more because I know you have a plethora of knowledge to share. We hit the no-nos of networking. The next thing we're going to have to start doing is have the conversation about what to do in networking. You know, we told you what not to do. He told me not to do this. He told me not to do that. He told me not to do that. Just be paralyzed with fear. I don't know what to do now. We gave you a little hint. Just go tell people I'm here to make connections. Who can I connect you to? I mean, or just read my book or just read his book. Yeah. It's also called the guy knows a guy because I only have the one thing. It's perfect. I love it. (laughs) All right. Well, thank you so much, Michael. I adore you. You know, I love you. And I am so excited to share you with my badass crew and badass crew. You guys know how this goes. Stay tuned because there's another badass episode on its way. Thanks for listening to the badass direct sales mastery podcast with your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Why are you waiting to go to badassdirectsalesmastery.com? Don't make the Dom get her whip. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to share it with another rock star that you know in direct sales after you subscribe to the podcast so you won't miss any future episodes. You can also check out the show notes for links and any contact information mentioned in today's episode. We'll see you next time.